Would you consider yourself mixed? So if it's a if it's the man's seed and your dad is a black man, what does that make you? Black, right? So it's no such thing as mixed. Read that, Numbers 1 and 18. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So they're finding out a pedigree, a lineage by the house of their father. God deals with people by the father. So if your father is a black man, that makes you black. So according to this one we're sharing here, this is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. God got a chosen people who are the Israelites. He chose the Israelites as his people. This is the name of the tribes that God gave in the Bible. This is what America, our oppressors, call us today. So, on here, what tribe is your people? Uh, I guess number one. Judah. The tribe of Judah, right? Okay, so now let me ask you this. Did you know that Christ was from the tribe of Judah? I did not. I'm going to ask you this. What does Christ look like? So, uh, have you ever dwelt on that to see, like, so, do you believe in God? So, if you believe in God, you believe in Christ, what does the Christ that you pray to look like? Have you ever got a description of Christ? No. No? So, have you ever seen this picture right here? Yes. Who is that? that Jesus Christ was, right? But that's actually Caesar Borgia. His name is Caesar Borgia. That is not Christ. We're going to read a description to you, and I want you to tell me if that matches up to what I just showed. Okay? Read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, and it as white as snow. White woolly hair. Did that man have that? Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Meaning that his, his eyes was red because he had drunk wine. See? And his feet like unto fine brass. Now his feet was the color of brass. What's the color of brass? Brown, right? See? As if they burned in a furnace. So if you burn some brass in a furnace and put it out, what color is it going to be? Darker brown. It's going to be darker, right? So is it safe to say that Christ was a dark-skinned black man? So now, we go back to that picture. Who was that? The guy you said it was. What was his name? An Italian man. Caesar Borgia. He was Pope Alexander VI's son. So now, is it safe to say that everything that you understand or been hearing or believing about God is wrong? That's why it's important for us to study and read for ourselves. Fold this up and put it in your pocket for the baby rip it up because this is important history for you that you need to read to understand where you come from. So you can teach this young king right here because one thing that's happening right now is that the parents of these children right now don't even understand their nationality to teach to their children. But with you knowing that you are, that you have been created to be a special person according to God, and now you can carry yourself a different kind of way, right? Look at what the scripture says about our nation, the nation that we're from. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See, the scripture says that God chose us to be a special people to himself above everybody else on the face of the earth. 
So what that means is the Israelites, everybody on that paper that I showed you, them tribes, those are God's chosen. If you're not on that paper as one of them tribes, then guess what? You wasn't chosen. Now, I know that may be a tough pill for you to swallow with your mother being a so-called white person, right? Do you know what the Bible says about the so-called white people? Genesis 25, we're going to get the description of the so-called white person in the Bible. We're going to get the biblical title for it, the biblical name for it, okay? Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 25 and Sorry. verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. 22. 22. And the children, 21. Yeah. 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. So this is the story of Isaac and Rebecca. Rebecca was, she was pregnant with two children, which is twins. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. So her, the twins that she was pregnant with was struggling in her womb. They were fighting inside of the womb. Read. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Uh -huh. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two nations of people are in your womb. Did you ever know that that was possible? Uh -huh. Read. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So two manners uh -huh. of people should be separated. So when you have your twins, Two manners of people should be separated. You're going to have one manner here and another manner, read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. Uh-huh. And the elder shall serve the younger. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh-huh. And the first came out red all over like in hairy garment. So we just got the description of the first twin. The description said that the first twin came out red all over like a hairy garment, right? Remember that. Read. And they called his name Esau. What was his name? Huh? Esau. Correct. Read. And after that came out his brother. Came his brother out. And after that, his brother came out. Did you notice that they never gave the description of his brother? Why is that? Because his brother looked like everybody else did already. And according to the Bible, this is how everybody else looked. Give me Genesis 2 and 7. This is how everybody else looked from Adam on in. This is how the people that look. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. So the man was formed of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Brown, right? And the deeper you dig into the ground, the darker it gets, right? So if the first man, which was Adam, was formed by the dust of the ground, made him a black man. Meaning everybody else that was on the face of the earth was a dark skinned people. So when they read this about Rebecca's son that came out, they said that he was red and hairy, right? What does that look like today? What people does that look like today? Because they're not actually white, they're actually red. Like pink. Yeah, pink. <laughs> right? What do they call themselves in the South? Rednecks. Yeah. You get one of them, you, if your mama get mad, she turn in what color? Red. Red, right? Yeah. So, according to the scripture that we read it, the scripture calls the white nation, what? The, the, the ah! son's name that came out, his name was called what? Esau. You're yeah, right. Okay, now, yeah, now show me where, how they was. He was the father, the progenitor of the Edomites. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 31, and verse, I mean, 36 and verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau, who is Edom. Today, the white nation of people are called Edomites. We are the Israelites, they are the Edomites, okay? Now, according to this Bible, I'm going to show you what God says about Esau. Because 
because in your, your vision of what you showed me what Christ is, I'm pretty sure that you think that God loves everybody, right? That's what you was taught, right? Give me that Romans 9. Somebody is running around teaching people that God loves everybody, God doesn't hate, and he don't, he's not going to destroy somebody. Watch what the Bible says. The book Romans 9 and 13. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So we just read the story of Jacob and Esau. Who was Jacob? Esau's brother, which was what? A black man. Who was Esau? Jacob's brother, which was what? A white man. And he was the forefather of who? The Edomites. Right? So we just read. Read that again. Book of Romans chapter 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So the most high God hates Esau, hates the Edomites. Why? Because they have been, remember we were read in the womb, they was fighting in the womb. Esau have had a perpetual hatred for us since day one. That's why it's not a mystery of how we getting treated today, how we get gunned down in the streets by all oppressors. This is what God says about the other nations. Give me um, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. It says we're gonna have to serve our enemies, right? No, give me Leviticus uh, 14, 26 first. So now we're on the topic of enemies, okay? So we're going to find out who the enemies are, who the enemies of God are, who the enemies of the Israelites are. You got it? The book of is that Leviticus? Yeah. 14 and 26. Yeah. The book of Leviticus chapter 14 and verse 26. Is that it? Okay. You know what I want? Yeah, I know what you want. Uh, Leviticus. 24 and 16. There we go. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 16. I will also do this unto you. Uh -huh, that's what I, want. I will even appoint over you terror. Okay, so this is a curse that happened to the Israelites for not doing what God said to do. He said he's going to appoint over us terror. Read. Consumption, the burning agony, uh -huh. and shall consume your eyes. The cause, the cause sorrow of heart and ye shall sow your seed in vain, uh -huh. and your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. So, for us not doing what God said, we said we are going to be slain before our enemies. Is that happening today? Are we being killed in front of our enemies, and, and it's nothing happening to the people that's killing us? Are the police gunning us down in the street? Nothing is happening to the police, and it's being recorded. Is that happening? Right? Okay, so now go back to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. Because what I want what I want to get you to see is who God is saying the enemy is. I don't want you to think that I'm sitting here telling you something. I want you to hear it from out of the Bible. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee, uh -huh. in hunger, in hunger, and in thirst, uh -huh. and in nakedness. So for food water and clothing who do we have to get that from who owns all of them who owns the water company who owns all these stores who owns the grocery stores who owns uh, the where you get your clothes from is it us is it people that look like us sometimes sometimes give me one instance for instance of a black grocery store owner okay yeah i can you can't right Give me one, for instance, of a black uh, uh, water department owner. Like, which water brand was named after a black man? You know, you got Fiji, Avion, all that, Arrowhead. Is any of them black? What about your clothes? Can you name a black uh, textile producer? Somebody that's producing clothes? Someone that's signed tomorrow. But, uh... What nation of people is this speaking about? Who owns all this stuff? White people, right? So according to what we just read, 
What does God say about the white person? What title did God give the white person? The enemy. The enemy. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with what God said? To a certain extent, yeah. Okay, what's that extent? Extent. I mean, because I understand what you're going through because, like you said, your mother, which is probably the woman that raised you, even to this day, plays a major role in your life, is white, right? Yeah. And your father, which is a black man, probably, is, is he around? No. Has he ever been around? Yes. He's been around, but he's not around now. Why is that? <laughs> It's part of the curses, sis. Part of the curses is it breaks the, the curses of us not keeping God's commandments. The curses said that our lives will be like this. We will have broken families like this. So what I want to get you to understand is that the nationality, national makes a difference in everything. Your nationality of you being an Israelite shows you that, hey, I'm an Israelite. The son, the son is, a, is, is, is his father a black man? Your son is an Israelite. So now, do you think that it would be important for you to teach your son who his enemy is at a young age rather than him getting older thinking that his enemy is somebody that looks like him? Yep. That's important, right? Because that's what's going on today. Look at the gang violence. You got bloods beefing with Crips because of a color. And they both look alike. So they think each other is the enemy. But the scripture says, and the Bible says, God says that our enemies are these other nations. Now, I'm not just jumping on the white, white men's back. It's also the Chinamen. What about the Chinamen? Did you know that we played a role in building the, the Great Wall of China? They had us in slavery. The East Indian men had us in slavery. Even the African. Yes, I said African because we are not African. I'm talking about the real deal African men that's like the Zulu warriors. Did you know that the Zulu warriors never went in the state? They were selling us being Israelites into slavery because we was not them. Have you ever heard of somebody saying, y'all sold y'all self into slavery? That, well, that's not what happened. Let's step over here so Just because we got the same complex as these dark skinned people doesn't make us the same because you can uh, have the same complex as the East Indian men. That's, that doesn't make us the same. Thing. So the importance of what I'm trying to, to explain to you right now is your nationality, who you are, what you are supposed to be doing according to God. That's our whole that's our whole skill is teaching our people what they do wrong. The reason why we in the conditions that we in today is because we didn't keep God's commandments. We didn't do what God said to do. And the only way that we change that back to God's commandments is by doing what God said to do. Okay? What's your name? Letitia. Letitia, I'm Uriel. Letitia, it's nice to meet you. So you got that flyer. This is our address. This is where we at. There's a phone number on that flyer as well. So if you have any questions, you can call that number, bring them to the business, so you can learn more. Because with me just sitting here talking to you for this minute, it's not enough for you to continue your life and learn how to raise Because we've been promised that we're supposed to live forever and be put back in rulership, but that's not going to happen until Christ come back and we start doing what God said to do. So you got some decisions to make, sis, so it's up to you to make them decisions, all right? I hope that we'll see you again. All right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.